Welcome back to the Mallorca career mode here on the channel. We start with a game away from home against league leaders and, uh, well, rather unsurprisingly, considering the state of the table, uh, unofficial league winners, Espanyol. We do have a game in hand on Girona, but unfortunately they've won that extra game. So the gap to them is now eight points, but we can close it to five. And uh, Sporting remain just three points above us. Alcacon, they have uh, four points behind, seven points to gap to Leganes and eight points to gap to Almeria. So we're kind of eight points inside the playoffs each way. Although obviously we can close the gap above should we be able to uh, to win our games in hand. The border, well, I'm happy at the minute. Espanyol, Almeria and then a couple of other teams that I don't necessarily recognise the the badges of, badges of off the top of my head. But you can see the board are uh, mm, pissed right now. Uh, we have nine eligible players that we could use for this uh, this Youth Academy objective. That's a two-season long-term one, so we'll probably lean to do that next year. Seven clean sheets in home matches. We've got five so far this season, and there aren't many left. So two clean sheets in home games are pretty essential to get that. Financially, we have done that one. Uh, they want us to win the league title, though. And, well, rather obviously, that's not going to happen with Espanyol having the season that they are. We're currently fourth. And uh, that's probably the only re the only place where the board are actually that frustrated at me. But, I mean, we're set in the playoffs and we're not in an automatic promotion spot. So, understandably, the board are slightly frustrated. We do have a scout report available as well. And Lombardo is unhappy with the amount of, or lack of, for, better, for a better phrase, first team football available to him. And has put in a loan request. Uh, I'm kind of wanting, I've started to, in fact, use him a little bit more frequently as a substitute, but obviously it's not enough for him. We do have a youth scout report here from Venezuela, although we're still waiting for that absolute banger. Mark Herrera might be decent. Mark Herrera might be decent. He's 17, either a left mid, a left wing or a striker. Let's have a look at him. We've had some growth with the other players in the youth setup as well. Bay is now 68 rated and has potential of 82 to 92. So it probably won't be that long before he's filtered in to the first team squad. You can see short pass is 73. Uh, curve is really good. Free kick accuracy is good. His ball control and his dribbling could do with some improving. But we're obviously improving his ball control currently with a box-to-box -box, uh, development plan. And his physicals are all right. But again, obviously could do with a little bit of improvement. Tian has 80 to 86 potential. He's 66 rated currently. Five-star weak foot, of course. Physically, he's neither here nor there, really. But he's still only 15. And uh, technically, decent ball control. Well, actually, very good ball control for a 15-year-old. Dribbling and free kick, free kick accuracy also look good. But the rest of his stats need a little bit more improvement. Prado, 84 to 90 potential for him. But it's going to take forever for him to actually get there, I think. So that might just be a sell-on for a little bit of money when the time comes. And Mark Herrera, 3-star, three 3-star. Three physically indifferent. Technically... Woeful. How these are technically gifted players, I am really not sure. 61 finishing being his best stat as a left wing and or centre mid. Probably more suited to a central midfield role, you would have said, than a wing role. Consider the lack of pace and crossing is not necessarily that good either. But short passing of 44. Hmm, I think I'm just going to give up on him straight off the bat. Sorry, Herrera, but you, that's a no from me, mate. Right, we start then with Espanyol away. And then... We'll probably sim the second game, play Almeria, and then play the final game of the uh, the month as well before we head into tomorrow's season finale. But will it be all told a season finale, or will we have playoffs to play? I hope it's an all told season finale. We can close the gap on a second placed Sporting Girona, or but not sure, not sure. This man, Sergi Dada has nearly 30 goals this season from CDM. Nearly 30 goals from CDM. Ridiculous. As you might well expect, considering the season they're having, Espanyol have the best defensive record in the table. They also have the best goal-scoring record in the league as well. With big Diego Lopez in goal, it's no surprise that they're not conceding many. We've got a couple of decent goal scorers in our side, but we haven't necessarily been scoring that freely recently. And with Espanyol having, well, apparently the world-class Sergi Dada scoring every which way, 
then I, I don't really know how we're going to get a result here other than with a large slice of luck. So Zunada was wearing num a number 10 there, so I'm curious as to know whether he's actually playing in a cam role. It looks like he may well be. Judging by the fact that he's sat there behind Wu Lei. No, he's playing wide left. He's got centre mid, left mid and cam as his potential positions. But he's not quick. 59 acceleration, 51 sprint speed uh, as his default stats. And only growth potential to go up plus one. So Sergi Dada is breaking all kinds of expectations with his season so far. And to be fair, Espanyol are breaking all kinds of expectations with their season as well. They're still, as far as I'm aware on for an invincible year even though they are certainly going to win the title i'd love to be the first side and potentially only side to get a victory against them in the whole season we drew against them earlier on in the year so we do have history of being able to do something against espanol although it was a last minute equalizer so perhaps a little bit more straightforward this occasion please but i would like to avoid defeat at the very least but with the way that things are around us, I could really do with three points in every single game we've got remaining. Jordi and Bula getting away from Pedrosa, but I just don't have any options there to play the pass. Mark Cardona will drill it into the middle, looking for DI. It's Defender that gets there first, and they'll calmly play it away. Certainly a side of La Liga quality here, this Espanyol team. They're far, far, far too good for La Liga Smart Bank. Ule to Vargas. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting that flick. Sergi Dada in the box, tackled well by Ismail Casas. That needed to be made. That little flick from the man in the middle there was outrageous. Fabas, just show some strength, good lad. Ooh, not where that was supposed to go. Danny Rodriguez was there ready and waiting, and that was where that pass was intended to go. Look at Fabas busting a gut to get forward, though. He's desperate to try and turn our fortunes around, as is Captain Fantastic Danny Rodriguez! Let's go, league leaders, probable, almost certain league winners, Espanyol, nil, Mallorca uno, vamos. Actually, I want to see that goal again, please, because that was a hell of a finish from Danny Rodriguez. He has scored some wonderful goals for us this season, and that is right up there. Just bobbled off his foot, so it sat up perfectly for a first time hit once he got to the loose ball. And well, that is absolute perfection. Wu Lei. That's a nice ball around the corner. That's a lovely early first ball pass for first time pass. And Barber lays that back. And f oh, you lucky bastards. That is how your fortune goes when you're having the sort of season that Espanyol are. There's not much you can do about that. You close the man down. You block the shot really well. And it flies free to the one man at the back post who volleys it home first time. It's a good finish. It's a very good finish. But there is a large slice of luck involved there. You would imagine they've got to where they are in the league, Espanyol, by being genuinely really good. But having some luck like that certainly helps along the way. Fran Merida. Back to Miguelon. Vargas. Little back heel. I didn't press anything there, tackle button wise. He literally just fell over, and I would have been fuming if a penalty had been given. Lombardo wants a loan spell, wants some first team football. Now's his chance to impress as well. Cardona looking for Federico Insua, who's found himself in behind here. Federico Insua making a name for himself. Is he the man to score the goal that disconnects my controller and sees Espanyol's? Invincible record ruined. Federico Insua makes it Espanol uno Mallorca dos. From Merida via a teammate at right back. Merida at wide to Mbaba again. Espanol don't want to lose their invincible record, especially at home, to a side that hasn't really threatened them too much throughout the course of either fixture, really, that we've played against them this year. We might be bit disgruntled at the way that they scored their one but certainly they've been a better side in this game and they'll be disgruntled that we've been able to score two <sighs> previously to this game in 34 fixtures they conceded 20 goals less much less in fact on average than a goal a game not sure if that was needed by Kufre to come in and step across there whether the keeper would have got there or not but I wasn't taking any risks 
They've scored 80 plus goals as well, Espanol. 80 plus. In the, like they're averaging almost they're averaging almost three goals a game and conceding less than one goal a game. And there is their second from the corner. Buried off the bench. RDT. I don't know what his name is, but that is a brilliant header at the near post. And neither the keeper nor the man on it could keep it out. It's Ishmael Casas, but to be fair, the header was struck so well that he just couldn't do anything to keep it out. Raul de Tomas. RDT. Espanol dos. Mallorca dos. Sergi Dada. Forward to de Tomas. Foul. <laughs> Fran Marida to David Lopez. Vargas, David Lopez. He scored against us in the first game against Espanyol and Kufre again having to do nothing but force the corner to try and keep Espanyol out don't win it in the last minute please lads oh my god oh my god Raul de Tomas from the corner again ha <laughs> um Hey, that's, that's Coco Vegas' celebration, Diego. How dare you? I think, I think, with that goal, they may have just won the title. And to be fair, if you're going to win a title, why not do it in such spectacular fashion? That's disgusting from Espanyol. Raul de, Raul de Tomas with two late-headed corner goals to give Espanyol victory... And Federico Insua will not make a name for himself yet in his fledgling career. I believe that is the league title for Espanyol, but I'm not sure. We'll have to check mathematically as we drop back to the menus. That sums up our season, doesn't it? Very, very much so. Unbelievable to have had it turned around like that. With eight games to go and 24 points available... Espanyol are 27 points clear. They are league champions with that turnaround against me. They really have. They really have done it in style. I'm talking about player of the map. They're going to say anything about the league title? No. Nope. New York is still without a win. When was the last time we won? I forgot about that. I forgot how bad our form was in March. We haven't won since the 28th of February. We've only won twice since the January transfer window, which was our last good spell of form. We are winless in five. Uh, let's go and win the next one then, shall we please? Christ. Board getting even more frustrated with me. The manager rating drops to 60. Surely we can't get sacked season one, can we? Rangers have come in and tried to get Lombardo on loan for a year. I actually might be genuinely open to that for next season, of course, as it will be. So I'm I'm leaning towards actually accepting it. It may well be the right thing to do for Lombardo to try and get some first-team football and some growth because of his uh, potential that is, is available there. Enzo Lombardo starts at 70, has potential of 79, so could be a first-team squad player later in his career. So I will actually accept that one-year loan deal for Rangers he'll obviously not go until the next window so that would be at the beginning of season two but he would go there for the full season uh, so it might be the right thing to do for him to be fair and he might have just by pushing for it helped maintain his career at the club right Legroniers is our next game I don't even remember having them in a game previously but this has to be the second game against them this season because there's no way we're playing them twice in the final few games. And we've only narrowly scraped, despite dominating the game, as you can see from the stats, a 1-0 win thanks to Mark Cardona. No news yet of any Hirona or Sporting dropped points. But it's mainly because they haven't played, as you can see by the league table there. Bella Kotcha is wanting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit of first-team football. And the minute you're just back up, my man. But... I should probably give you some football to ensure that your potential doesn't dwindle. So maybe 
Maybe we've got a number of players trying to force the issue now and get their name in the first team team sheet either now or ensuring that they do later down the line in their careers. Almeria with Macaridzi in goal, Juan Villa up top, Cesar De La Hose in the midfield with Petrovic as well, out alongside him in that CDM role or centre mid probably, as it may well be. Vialba on the left-hand side. Almeria were our first played game in this save. And we won. So I am relatively confident of doing that again. Although, of course, after the way the Espanyol game just went, maybe that confidence is slightly misplaced. <laughs> I don't know where Almeria are in the league, actually. I don't think I checked. Oh, Diego could be in here. It's a long pass. Cardona's hold-up plays decent, but his passing actually isn't that great. Diego can't give us a 1-0 lead, though. I don't know, it does hold the ball up well, but on a number of occasions this season, I've gone to then play a teammate in after that hold-up play, and he's not been able to find him with an overhit pass. That one I did overhit. We just got lucky that it was Diego that it was going towards, and he's fast enough to be able to get there. Oh my god, Juan Villar's quite quick as well. And caught on the counter, Almeria take a 1-0 lead here against Mallorca. He just ran straight through the middle. I mean, it wasn't even the best of finishes either. <laughs> this is probably one of the worst runs of form I've had in any save ever. Certainly one of the longest winless runs I've had of recent memory. Probably since, remember the, the second season at Cambridge last year? Might even have been the year before, where we nearly got... We nearly got... Uh, not relegated, but nearly finished in the bottom two of the... Uh, League 2 table, or at least were threatened with it before actually somehow managing to oh, get ourselves back up to the playoffs in a really strong second half of a season. This is probably the worst period of form I've had in any save since then. Not good right now for Mallorca. Certainly not promotion form, is it? Or even close to it. Cross, decent, headed away, but only as far as De La Hoz. Aki, De La Hoz. Oh, I thought Fabas could have stolen in there. Here's Carvalho, Vialba around the corner to Aki. Done really well. Good block by the defender. And Bula will have to come back and collect that. Casas has gone down the line. But find him. We cannot. And Aki is in the box and looking dangerous. And with men to aim for in the middle. He can't find them. Win this, please, and Bula. Well up. Right, come on. Let's go on a counter of our own, please. Play that in front of Sanchez. Drive into the space. Cardona's there. Come on, Danny. And Bula's free on that right-hand side. Again, overhit pass from Cardona. But can we find him? Oh, it's a poor ball. It's a poor ball from Mbula. Really not had the quality in this second half of the season. Not at all. Nice ball through to Fabas, but stolen away from him from De La Oz. Sometimes in saves, it's a case of our team grows much quicker than the AI. And we become too good for the level that we're at when rising through the leagues. But this season has been the polar opposite of that. As our players have grown, our performances have gone backwards. Having Valiant stolen from us may well be a big factor. We, As you can see from the ratings there, we're higher rated further up the field. But at the back, still waiting for those players to grow. And maybe that is the issue at the minute. We don't have a high enough rated defence. A good enough defence. But we've got youngsters in at the club and players that will grow. So it will come in time. And hopefully we can still get ourselves promoted and offer ourselves the opportunity to play in La Liga next season. If we don't get promoted, then I think next year may well be that season where, you know, players become too good for the level that we're at and we could maybe have an Espanyol-style season next year. But I'd rather go up this year and have kind of a, a proper relegation fight next season Purely for... Oh, that was not supposed to go there. Purely for entertainment purposes. So we'll have to wait and see if we can force the issue. But it, it does look like it's going to have to be playoffs if it's anything. Because we are not picking up... Well, even a single win. Let alone the string of wins we'd need to close that gap down on Hirona. And they don't look like they're going to be dropping points anytime soon either. Let alone the volume of points we'd need them to. To get ourselves back level with them. Cardona can't bring us back level with Almeria either. Just lacking that bit of quality again. Cardona, Fabas, come on Danny. Oh, ref, that has to be a foul for there. 
off of that. From there, we could do something. From a free kick, Kufre stood over it. Not the best free kick accuracy, but great other stats. So I will go for it from here. 23 yards out. I need something. We've said that he's kind of our Luca Digne style player. When Luca Digne can bang a whipped free kick whenever he likes. Unfortunately, Kufre didn't quite get the aiming on point there. If I'd have timed that green, I think that might have been 1 1. Danny Rodriguez swept out wide to Kufre. Tiedu shows no attacking intent whatsoever. Fabas. He's got the legs to get away. He's one of my highest rated players, Fabas, but I don't know as I actually get the right sort of return from him. Could get himself an assist here, though. Dip! Oh, my God! What is my luck with this team right now? Genuinely, what have we got to do to get a positive result in a played game? I know we just won a sim, but I am not getting any luck in played games whatsoever. And Bula... That will fall to Fabas. Is that the stroke of luck we were waiting for? I can't find the space to get a shot away. Fabas is there again. Cardona's around the corner here. Done well to get away. Fabas will go out wide. No, it was meant from Bula. <sighs> Starting to lose all faith in this team right now. This is unfamiliar territory for us in a career mode save. It's not very often... We find ourselves struggling as much as we are here. But, A, being in a different country has added another dimension to this save. And B, being in this sort of form has added another dimension to this save as well. It is not what you guys are used to seeing. Hopefully you are continuing to enjoy the save though. I know it isn't getting as many views as I perhaps might like. But those of you that are enjoying it are certainly enjoying it as much as anything else that you've watched on the channel. So, fingers crossed that continues. And that tackle there is going to ensure that we don't get the counter-attack I was after to get myself an equaliser. Well, bar hit and bounced on the line. Post hit with a one-on-one. -on -one. Defeat to Almeria. A 1-0 loss. We are still a long time without a win in a played game. Having to rely on that simulated victory to ensure that our points tally keeps ticking over. Las Palmas have beaten Alcacon, which is good news for us. Espanyol win again. Jeez Louise. Espanyol have 100 points now and they've still got six games to go. We are still fourth. Eight points off Herona and they have a game in hand. Athletic Club de Bilbao have won the Copa del Reyes. You can see on the right hand side there with Antonio Rudiger playing for them. We, up next, have Sabadell, I think it was. I think that is Sabadell's badge. Is it Sabadell's badge? It is Sabadell's badge. Bottom of the table. This one we have to win, surely. We simulated the first game of the league season against Sabadell and actually lost it by three goals to two. At the time, I was hoping to kind of give myself an idea of what... Playing in this division was going to be like at that early stage. And losing that first simulated game. Especially now that we know that that simulated game was against a side that really aren't that good. The fact that they are bottom of the league and they beat us on opening day. Shows just how difficult this division genuinely is. We've been up. We've been down. And hopefully we can end with more of the former than the latter. Certainly for this episode and hopefully for the season as well. Tomorrow will be the season finale, of course. And to be honest, looking at the league table, we'll probably have the playoffs tomorrow as well. As I don't think, or at least the playoff semi-finals. Because I really don't think we're going to be getting that second spot, lads. I hate to break it to you. But you've probably already been able to figure out for yourselves. Not another corner goal that we will not be finishing in an automatic promotion playing spot this season. It will probably be, it will almost certainly be, playoffs for us this year and the lottery of that method of trying to get promoted rather than definitively getting automatic promotion. Sabadell are bottom. They obviously can't go any lower in FIFA because there are no further divisions in this game. If it were Football Manager, they could certainly go down a couple of notches. 
Just bump it out there, play it. Oh, too heavily ahead of Mbula. And we should have made that 1-0. But another case of a missed opportunity. Nestor over the top. Looking for Pierre Cornud forward from left back. One of their defenders has picked up a knock in these early stages, but it's at the other end of the field that they're trying to make things work for them at the moment. Really strange kit for Sabadell. I can't say as I'm a fan of it whatsoever. Really odd, the, like, the way that it, the white fades into the blue and the blue fades into the white. It, it's kind of Bristol Rovers-esque, but still worse. That makes sense. And Bula will try and get this inside. Not much could be worse than our current form. And Danny Rodriguez, he's not got the space for the shot. Is he going to go again? He is, but too late. Fabas, turning well, driving well, shooting well, scoring well. Oh, it came off Danny Rodriguez, did it? Well, Fabas will celebrate with him, but I, I need to see a replay because I thought that was just awkwardly hit by Fabas, but floated into the back of the net. I need to see how exactly that ended up going between the sticks. Fabas does well to get away here. And then a little burst of acceleration to get past. I mean, does that hit Danny Rodriguez? Does that hit Danny Rodriguez? I mean, maybe it brushes the little fibres sticking off of his sock. But I'm not sure that that should be taken away from Fabas there. I think that is the central midfielder's goal. We lead by one goal to nil after half an hour. Let's actually hold on to it this time, shall we? Danny Rodriguez! Vamos! Cardona. I've not got the option out wide. We're going to have to just use Danny Rodriguez and hope that movement around me is good enough. Cardona. Danny Rodriguez is pushing. Lucky to get the one goal. Earns the second. Mallorca dos. Sabadell zero. We should now see this one through. Stoichkov with the free kick for them. Lofted forward. Russo wins it well. Danny Rodriguez into Sanchez. Just gotten underway here at the beginning of the second half. I should have played Cardona in there. It's my fault for delaying with the pass. And Sanchez is probably going to have to go solo now or look for support. Okay, uh, Mbula, not meant for you. Danny Rodriguez is literally stood right in the path of the ball and on a hat trick. And it doesn't let him take control of it. Mbula lashes it over the bar on his left foot. And sadly, we will, well, we will stay only 2-0 in front. I'm just glad that we've been able to prove that we can still get victories with this team, albeit it is having to come against bottom of the table Sabadell, but sometimes all you need is that one little ego boost and everything can start to fall into place after that. Maybe this could be the victory that sparks our playoff promotion chances. Well, Martin, early cross. Stoichkov does get there, but that is simple for Koke Vegas. Ooh, nearly balls the throw up, mind. And a lot of room there, Mbula, and then all of a sudden it was gone. Sanchez worked this out wide. Kufre has the option down the line and will use him. I've got substitutions waiting to be made at the moment, and they will come on the next time the ball goes out of play, which may be, may we, may well be, oh, oh could still be a third Mallorca goal. A third Danny Rodriguez goal. Hat-trick hero, Danny Rodriguez. Mallorca 3, Sabadell 0. That'll do nicely. Casas. Simple ball to Fabas. One of his best games in a Mallorca shirt. This, I have to be honest, for Fabas. Considering he's one of our highest rated players, he doesn't put in the performances that you expect of him as often as he should. Fabas looking for Lombardo. He's got Kufre on the overlap. He'll find him. And Kufre whips a great ball, but Cardano can't nod it home. Halfway through the season, I was desperate in wanting to bring Mark Cardano back to the club for next season. I'm undecided at this moment in time as to whether Cardona is actually worth getting. On a free, arguably too good to turn down. But as maybe a backup striker, should we have someone better or someone different? Whether they're better or not, or higher rated or not, remains to be seen. Depends on what our budget is, but his goals have been dry of late. But is that ha tied hand in hand with just our overall lack of performance? 
Maybe so. Danny Rodriguez absolutely earns that match ball and deservedly will take it home and pop it on the mantelpiece or in the uh, trophy cabinet that he'll have back at home. Uh, man of the match as well, undoubtedly. Captain's armband worn and led by example, as you would expect of our best player so far this season, Danny Rodriguez. Espanyol continue to ride on into the sunset. They've already won the title and now just five games away from that invincible title as well. We are 11 points from second spot with 15 to go. Not happening. We are 10 points from seventh spot with five games to go. Not happening. So we will finish in the playoffs this season. So tomorrow we will have the season finale and we will also have the playoffs as well. Semi-finals of which. And then should we make the final, that will be a one-off special with the suit. If not, it will be season two, episode one, as we look to go again in La Liga Smart Bank next year. But I pray that the playoffs can give us some joy this year. We were second with a five-point gap just three or four episodes ago. Now we're miles off the mark but Alcacorn, Leganes and Sporting whilst have played well against us this year I'm half confident of being able to win the playoffs but we are going to have to ensure that we channel our inner Danny Rodriguez and make sure we get it done I, I don't know I genuinely don't know what's going to happen but we will find out at least in part tomorrow Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you then.